Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. Y'all have been asking for Steelheart for ages. So I'm finally going to check them out. We're gonna be using an unplugged version, which makes me really excited because that will allow me to dive face first into some hopefully glammy, glorious vocals. So let's get to it. Any song that begins with a piano solo on a grand piano is like instantly a winner in my book. Just so you know, if, if y'all are recommending songs to me and you're like, mm, what should I recommend? If it's got a piano solo at the beginning, ooh, it's probably gonna get me. I've spent my whole life playing piano. So this is partly why. Also, I just have to say, I really like it when in piano recordings, I can hear the sound of the damper pedal. <laughs> that's um, that's one of those pedals at the bottom and it uh, essentially like uh, can cause some felt stuff to lift up and, and you'll hear this, this lifting sound or like almost like a fuzzy sound in the recording when that happens. It's really subtle, but when I use a software instrument, I, that's a piano and I always look for it to have that kind of sound. It has that beautiful acoustic feel to it. Dramatic pause. She's gone out of my life. I was wrong. I'm to blame. I was so I can live without the love In my life There's just an empty space All my dreams are lost I'm wasting away Oh, that was like an amazing first taste of this vocalist whose name is really, really, really hard to pronounce. I'm going to try and butcher it right now. Miljanko. Miljanko? Miljanko Matijevich? That's my guess. Miljanko Matijevich. It might be Miljanko Mati Matijevich. I think those J's are Y sounds. Um, but uh, this is an American rock band, in case you were curious. <laughs> I was like, wait a second, what? Uh, I need a little more history on these guys, obviously. Um, but he's, he's like the baby of Dio and Robert Plant right now. I'm hearing like lots of that generosity and some of the like toss-offs that Dio has. Um, but then there's, uh, there's this also sort of bold, like a little wildness that I get a little more from Robert Plant. Oh, I'm gonna go back. <laughs> Ooh, back further, oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> She's gone. Ooh, okay, that's right. You can tell that it's gonna work really well from the very first entrance. And that's because of how he breathes. When he breathes in, he immediately catches that air and dives into the sound. I've seen so many singers where they have this big dramatic pause and they take a breath and they're like, <gasps> and then they hold it before they dive into the sound. And that just actually causes things in the throat to close up so that that breath can be held underneath that closure. Then they have to reopen to sing. If you take a breath and then you just start singing at the top of the inhale, you just catch that wave, then you don't have that closure that you have to reopen and sort of burst through to start the sound. He does a great job of what I call catching the wave of the air. She's 
She's gone out of my life. Sorry, I shouldn't be so happy about that line. I was wrong. I'm to blame. I was so untrue. That's where I really started to feel this mixture of Dio and Robert Plant. Um, there's <laughs> the way he plays with the dynamics in particular make me feel like it's very Dio, the way it's always giving up something. But then there's like a little squeeze that can happen in different places that make me feel like there's some Robert Plant involved too. I'm to blame. <laughs> that sounds very so Dio. <laughs> That's my though. I can live without love In my life There's just an empty space All my dreams are lost I'm wasting away He is so detailed and and the variety of expressions he's choosing to use in this vocal entrance. There are times when he's doing like a creak, like a ah, uh, that kind of sound, right? That sounds sexy and intimate. And then there are times when he starts to sound with just pure, clean goodness. Uh, there are times when he is being right on the pitch and there's times when he's sort of like just barely under it just to kind of get under our skin a little bit. And there are times when he's sliding off of a note or totally sticking it. He's like every single little piece of this opening feels to me like he has thought about it a ton and thought, how do I want, how can I best express this melody, this feeling, and these words? In my life, there's that creak. There's just an empty space. Super clean there. Oh. Dreams, little slide off. I'm I mean, toss off. <laughs> Fun dip thong. <laughs> way, yay. Forgive me, girl. This is not only amazing in that it's so rangy right here, but it's amazing in how he shifts into his upper register. He mixes his voice really well. He mixes those vocal registers together. When people are shifting through high and low notes, uh, there's essentially these antagonistic muscles that are at play. You have uh, what we'll often call a TA dominant sound or a CT dominant sound, meaning thyroid or cricothyroids. Right now, my thyroid is still feeling rather swollen and unhappy because of coughing from COVID. But uh, that being said, uh, that means that it feels a little bit better for me to talk higher right now because the cricothyroids are feeling a little healthier in my voice. So things like this play a role in how easy uh, high and low notes can feel and how thick the sound can be as well. If you have a TA dominant sound, it tends to be a thicker sound, has more full vocal fold uh, connection in it. Now, when we talk about mixing, we're essentially talking about um, if the sound is like more than 50% TA, then that's the TA dominant. If it's more than 50% CT, that's the CT dominant, right? Sometimes we'll call these head or chest voice. What we call the register depends on what genre you're really coming from. Um, and there's a lot of confusion and bickering over that. But when we mix things together, we're talking about, well, like, how close can you get to that? Maybe that 50-50 kind of line. Can you be 80-20? Can you, can you mix it like more like 60-40? Or can we go like 59-41? When you get those closer bits together and you go really, really, really high, you start to shade if you're switching into a different vocal register. And in this way, you can actually take up uh, a sound that is contains more similar qualities as it goes through a wider range. So for him, while he goes up, the quality of the sound actually stays remarkably similar. It doesn't suddenly go into the super high floaty. It doesn't like flip over into falsetto here. Instead, he really mixes extremely, extremely well as he's going high. He thins 
out the voice so that he can go higher, but doesn't lose this strength. That's amazing. Okay, my mind just popped. It popped. It was like, Bleh. and that's because you did this super, super fast jump that was really it was over a very, a large range of notes. It was on my heart. My heart. Gosh, that's that's an octave at least. I think it is an octave. I, it's just that is a big, 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 big jump, and. That kind of jump that quickly is usually really, really hard to negotiate. He just like ripped it out. That's the kind of thing that Mozart would write just to make fun of singers. There's <laughs> there's this hilarious, hilarious aria that Mozart allegedly wrote for a singer that he didn't like very much. And she would look down when she sang low notes and then look up when she sang high notes. So he did all of these jumps to make her do this the whole time. Um, and that's because people often develop mannerisms around singing high and low notes that aren't necessarily great. And then sometimes snarky composers exploit them. <laughs> but you'll notice his chin doesn't move at all. That's uh, that's really good technique. <laughs> He did it again. Sing. Wow. She's gone out of my life. So I want to talk a little bit more about this mixing idea. Uh, because he does it in the lows as well, but in the opposite direction. So down here in the she's gone part, he's going for a really soft, uh, light, almost heady kind of sound. So in the highs, he's gonna be thinking about sort of mixing some of the lows in without making it flip over or be too hard to sing essentially. In the lows, he's actually thinking about bringing some of that high feeling down, bringing it sort of like thinning out the vocal folds a little bit. So he's essentially like doing this incredible balancing act the entire time with the different muscles in his voice. Not that most singers can't be like, oh, I'm going to do, it's not like I'm going to engage my bicep, right? It's, uh, these muscles are extremely intricate, very complicated. There's all kinds of cartilages that are wrapping around. So it's, uh, it isn't just like, oh, I'm gonna engage my thyroid. It's, uh, it tends to be working off of sensations like a thinner feel, or uh, maybe there can be a little bit of a tilt, or maybe I'm gonna go for a much heftier kind of feel. So that being said, brilliant mixing from both directions are happening here. Oh, out of my life. Right, there's a... Sort of effervescence oh, in this. So Added some weight there, so a little more TA engagement. Oh, ooh, I like that. I really miss that girl. Ooh, we're gonna go back. Go on. He actually like adds a little diphthong in there, all all on, to to just like cry on it a little bit. <laughs> Oh, I love the way he he put the comma into that phrase. You hear this like little, just like tiny drop in the energy to show the comma in the grammar. 
That was just a nice little touch. He's so detailed in his singing. I really miss that girl, my love. Come back into my arms. There's that creak again. I'm so alone. I'm begging you. I'm down on my knees. Forgive me, girl. Oh. Ooh, I like looking at his mouth shape as he's going up too. Sometimes it can really help with uh, something that is like going up in these kinds of ranges. I I know this is this kind of writing is actually very similar to operatic writing where you'll have these huge massive leaps. It is definitely showing off vocal technique all across the board in addition to just being like really heart moving, expressive. I, I'm like vocal nerding over here and he's like, oh, I've lost my, lost my girl. Sorry, man, <laughs> your voice is really cool. <laughs> We're gonna come back. Uh, let's check out his mouth as he's doing these leaps up. I'm so alone. I'm begging you, I'm down on my knees. Forgive me, girl. Oh, there's so much good that's happening as he goes up there. Wow. I, you could study what he's doing on this for hours and hours and hours and glean so much information about how to successfully sing a line like this. This is a really hard line to sing, okay? It's a hard line to sing with this kind of tone quality, with this strength in the voice. It's just like, there's a lot of things going on here. So one of the things that I'm looking at is the way he's engaging his body to support. If you think about just supporting the high note, you are like done, you're finished. You have to think about getting that support under you before you hit that high note because it needs to be prepared to essentially restrain all of this breath pressure that's about to just go. You don't want that to go smack a smack a smack a through your vocal folds, okay? Um, Instead, it needs to be prepared to restrain the breath pressure down lower in your body. So if you get your whole body involved, which I really see like this like sort of interesting movement that's happening here, you can tell he's connected to a lower place, which is fantastic. Uh, Miles, Miles Kennedy calls that the P muscles, FYI. There's a great interview about that in case you're wondering. Um, but lower pelvic floor, that's like your lowest breath support. But he's also kind of squeezing in here, which might be helping activate some of that back rib cage as well. There's lots of different muscles that can help us with breath support. And he's activating those and like actually reinitiating and sort of like almost massaging all of those muscles as he's going up to try and keep that super, super low breath support. But then his jaw is dropping as he's going higher and he's getting more and more teeth in the sound, right? The sound wants to go, he wants to make sure it's going forward. And uh, there's a, formants, there's a way that the mouth shape can help with the ringingness of the sound and also that can help a little bit with that mixing. And he's dropping the jaw. Sometimes we'll also say drop for the top. Never try and sing a high note like this. That's just gonna put so much stress right here. He's dropping his jaw as he goes up. There are other things we can lean as well, but let's go back to that moment. Come back. No, too far. Into my arms. That's okay. I'm so alone. I'm begging you. I'm down on my knees. It's good for comparison. That's a great screen level. Lady, can you forgive me? Ooh. So right here, you got just a tiny bit pitchy. This is, 
I've heard him like weave around the pitch quite a bit up until this point. I don't think that that was necessarily intentional. I think that might just be honestly a little bit tiring at this point because he is singing really, 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 really high in a very strong way and he's not letting it flip over. So this is like some of the most taxing singing that a guy can do right now. And I think it just just started to just started to get him right there. Just a tiny bit. But it sounds really heart wrenching. <sighs> That's ridiculous. Hey, well, I would describe that as essentially having an extension, an upper extension in the voice. Sometimes we'll talk about opera singers that are like maybe a lyric soprano that has an extension, like a lyric color to a soprano or something like this, um, where the singer's like meat of the voice hangs out a little lower, but all of a sudden it just feels like somehow they got like an extra fifth of range in that same timbre. That is ridiculous. I thought he was already really hanging out the top, top, top of that particular strength in his voice. Yeah, I think he could flip over and like go to falsetto and, and go higher. But no, I didn't think he was going to have that much more with this super powerful belted sound. That's ridiculous. I, I, I can hardly believe he actually held it together. It sounded like he was getting a little bit tired right before and then... He just got another wind. It felt like he just dug deeper into his support to make it through and kept his pocket in line. Notice, notice the body. The body is super engaged, but I'm not seeing any sort of like slamming of the shoulders or anything like that. If he did that, it would, uh, I, I'd be really scared that the voice would crack. It's engaged, but it isn't hitting. That's ridiculous. <laughs> and that is how you modify a vowel when you're high. The vowel is you, right? You, check my lips out. Ooh. Now check his lips out when he sings that vowel. He is not singing an ooh vowel. He's going, yo. It is, I think there's even a little ah in there. But we hear you. So essentially when you modify a vowel, it depends on where you're modifying the vowel. There are lots of different ways to do it, but the idea is to essentially shift the mouth shape so that it is easier to produce a particular sound. Um, but you want to still keep it close to the original vowel so that the audience is still hearing the word that you want to deliver. Opera singers have to do this all the time, okay? Because like like stratospheric high notes like galore. He. <laughs> is a poster boy right now for how to correctly modify a high vowel. He's dropping his jaw, but still maintaining a little bit of roundness there so we get the impression of an ooh, even though it's not actually an ooh vowel. Back one more time. Can you forgive for all Bam. Is that the end? <laughs> Dramatic low notes and they.
Dude can sing. Wow. I am so glad that this is my introduction to Steelheart because I love it when the vocalist just drags me in. That was glorious. Exactly what I wanted it to be. And now I'm ready to hear what the band sounds like awful all together. So make those recommendations in the comments down below. Thumbs up the ones that you like, okay? And then while you're trying to figure out what else to recommend, maybe you should check out some other videos on our channel and see if they've already been done. Here's a list of some of my favorites. May you fall more in love with music every day.